You're watching Sesame Street on Page on TV Land. Brought to you by Noggin. The Weather Channel. The cable television. 
Cartoon Network for America's Lifestyle.
of the Weather Channel is protected under the copyright laws of the United States and is intended solely for the use of our subscribers. Reproduction or other use of this programming without the express written permission of the network is prohibited.
of weather information 24 hours a day. You're watching the Weather Channel for accurate forecasts at your convenience. Weather you can always turn to. You're watching the Weather Channel for accurate forecasts at your convenience. Weather you can always turn to. You're watching the Weather Channel. Accurate and dependable forecasts you can always turn to. And when you're away from your television, the Weather Channel forecast is also available from the following. You're watching the Weather Channel. Weather you can always turn to for accurate, dependable weather forecasts 24 hours a day. Watching the Weather Channel. Weather you can always turn to for accurate, dependable weather forecasts 24 hours a day. You're watching the Weather Channel for accurate forecasts at your convenience. Weather you can always turn to. This is the Weather Channel. Weather you can always turn to for accurate, dependable weather forecasts 24 hours a day. This is the Weather Channel. Weather you can always turn to for accurate weather forecasts at your convenience 24 hours a day. You're watching the Weather Channel. Weather you can always turn to for accurate, dependable weather forecasts 24 hours a day. You're watching the Weather Channel. For accurate and dependable forecasts, you can always turn to on this cable system. And when you can't tune in, your Weather Channel forecast is also available from... Happy Mother's Day from the Weather Channel. Weather you can always turn to. For preserving American freedom, the Weather 
Montreal salutes our armed forces on this Memorial Day. <laughs>
Okay, first thing. more about the weather around the world and around your neighborhood. And when you're away from your television, the Weather Channel forecast is also available from the following. The Weather Channel. No place on Earth has better weather. More about the weather around the world and around your neighborhood. And when you're away from your television, the Weather Channel forecast is also available from the following. The Weather Channel. No place on Earth has better weather. Channel. No place on Earth has better weather. Channel. Brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or newspaper. Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider.
You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station. Merry Christmas from the Weather Channel. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or newspaper. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or newspaper. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or newspaper. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or newspaper. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel from this radio station. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or newspaper. Thank you. 
The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. Television Network, built for you. You are watching the Eternal Word Television Network.
it's okay. We love you the way you are. You don't have to prove anything to us. Do you forgive me? Of course we do. Uh, really? How could we not forgive you? We only want you to understand that what you did was wrong. And that if you're really sorry, we'll always, always forgive you. Then it doesn't matter to you that I'm not perfect? Oh, my little boy. <laughs> Mom? Dad? I'll always be honest with you. I was afraid. That's why I didn't want to tell you. Son? You should never be afraid. The people who really care for you will always forgive you. I have to go. Where to? I just remembered something really important. Thank you for showing Manuel and Philip the value of forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness. We see the crucifix that hangs over the altar. For having chosen to die on the cross to pay for our sins, and for having left us the sacrament of confession. Make sure all your children know that when they are truly sorry, they can go to a priest who will forgive their sins in your name and your power, Jesus. You're so good. Donut Shop. The Church Bazaar is a sweet success as the crew shares their journey to understanding the Mass. Be a blessing. Be a blessing. As the Lord is blessing you, you will be a blessing too. Be a Receiving blessing. Receiving Jesus. Next time at the Masterpiece Donut Shop on EWTN.
Good evening. Welcome in to NASCAR Race Hub. It's a sad day for all of us at Fox Sports and in the entire NASCAR world. We learned earlier today that our good friend Steve Burns passed away after a long fight against cancer. With Danielle Trotta, I'm Adam Alexander. In the next hour, we will celebrate Steve's life with those who knew him best. Today is a day we prayed would never come, and a moment we hoped we'd never have to share together, but we wanted to pay tribute to our good friend who meant so much to so many of you. And now a time of reflection as Ken Squire looks back at some moments we will never forget. Steve doing what he loved to do and carrying a smile every step of the way. This is Dale Earnhardt from Orangeville Speedway with Steve. What's your last name, Steve? Burns. Steve Burns simply could never learn to do it wrong. I'm sorry I like that. Well, hold on. Oh, man. Yeah, you're going good. <laughs> it was that thoughtfulness, that extra effort to get it right. Let's do one more. Okay that made Bernsey such a joy to work with. Such a joy to be with. I want to be spicy mustard. Estrada. Football and crab cakes. That's what I'm talking about. That's Maryland. That's Maryland. Since she made fun of my Maryland terrapins, I said if you can't beat them, join them. Join them. There you go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Matt Kansas, I'm doing something very important right here. This guy. It's my special boy. If he disagreed with what you thought was the way to do it, you had best take heed. His sense of how things fit together, his thoughtfulness about ramifications down the road, always made his voice important. Some media did make the decision to camp out and try and shoot video of the service. However, out of respect for the family in their time of grief, we did not. He was never mean, nor snide, nor sneaky. Just said his piece directly. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. It was always sincere, thoughtful. Steve thought a lot of his work and had belief in what he did. He always wanted what he worked on to add understanding to any story, any interview, whatever he was involved in. No question, the greatest involvement in Steve Byrne's life started at a racetrack when he met Karen Goins. We used to chide him about his marriage made in Martinsville, whatever track. For 20 years, it's been a solid one. And when their son Bryson, now 12, made his way onto the circuit, it became a family for the ages. Every night at the end of the show, I say, have an awesome night, which is actually our way at Totally of NASCAR, of saying thanks for watching. Well, today, July 23rd, the most awesome thing happened to me because Bryson Parker Burns was born. So Bryson, you tell him to have an awesome night. Yeah. Steve, with those shoulders and his agility, had made a heck of a quarterback in a high school up in Maryland. And Bryson looks like he's made of the same stuff. Oh, I saw him. Steve Burns' work was good. No, not just good. Damn good. He wrote well, he asked good questions, he had a warmth and charm that came through in the way he wrote and spoke. What you choose to do at that time is entirely up to you. No nonsense. Motorsports was fortunate to have a Steve Burns. His life work for me could always be defined in something Richard Petty framed years ago when Richard was asked how he wished to be remembered. And the king said, I had a job that I liked very much. And hopefully, people thought I did it pretty well. Indeed, Steve Burns did. And became a measure for us all. No doubt if 
uh, Steve were here with us tonight, he'd say we welcome in double trouble. Larry That's Hales right. and Jeff right. Hammond are with us on the program. And, and you, you three, Steve and, and the two of you, spent a lot of time together here in the studio and in the television booth at, at the track. And I know you guys have some amazing memories of those times together. Well, you know, the thing that's funny is, is how the sport brought us together. I mean, I first met Steve was when, you know, I was working as a crew chief and he was doing television. You saw some of the interviews he was doing with Earn Hart Lee. He was talking to Larry and I at that time also. And that's really where we kind of got to know him and found out what, what really a great guy he was. And he was very insightful, uh, had a great personality. And then when we got brought together as part of the Fox team, it just got better. Because we found out that not only is he a great friend, always has been a great friend, but what kind of a teacher he was, what kind of a coach he was, as far as making us into, I don't want to say we're television people yet, because we had a lot of work, I got a lot of work to do, <laughs> but he really helped a lot, didn't he, Larry? Yeah, I mean, the first time that I met Steve, we made those three chip trips over to Japan, and I think it was Suzuka in 97, and they had a rec room at the hotel for us to go hang out because there was nowhere to go in Suzuka, Japan. And I remember Steve and I and a bunch of us in there, all they had in there for us to drink was hot beer. But we drank their <laughs> hot beer. But the, the biggest thing with Steve Burns, he, he always had fun with yeah. what he did. It did not matter if it was a serious interview or all the years that we spent together on Trackside. I remember the special edition of Trackside at Talladega on Halloween when we all oh, dressed yeah. up. Steve Burns dressed up like Ric Flair. I'm talking he had it going. He had the blonde hair. He had the robe. He did Ric Flair better than Ric Flair could do Ric, Ric Flair. But Steve always did everything to the fullest, and he had fun with what he did. We are just scratching the surface with Burnsy stories throughout the hour. We'll continue to share memories of Steve. Here are a few more from some friends and colleagues. My best memory really of Steve is over a period of about 10 years when... We worked out of the same office trailer together at the racetrack, and I'd always try to get there early in the morning, and I never beat Steve there. He was always there before me. He was always in there working, and uh, there was one morning I tried to go in there just at the crack of dawn, and I walked in there, and Steve was already there, and he turned around and he said, where you been? <laughs> he was already there and working really hard. One time after a race, I was in a really bad mood, and he came to try to interview me, and I did the interview, but I kind of gave him a dirty look, and I'm like, well, how much longer? Because we're sitting there waiting on, uh, on uh, the commercial or something. I, I don't know. I was in a very foul mood, so um, I very much offended him, and I knew I did, and I apologized, and um, he's kind of kind of stubborn like me, so I had to find him the next week and apologize again, and then I had to find him the week after that and apologize again, and then, um, so finally we, he, he was, he forgave me, and, um, I then became his favorite driver. I think my best memory of Steve Burns took place at Las Vegas, and it also included one of our original teammates, Dick Berger, and it was Dick's rental car, he had me drive uh, in the post-race escape, and Steve sat in the back seat. And long story short, as we were backing up out of the tunnel, trying to jump in another lane that was moving much faster, we heard a big crunch. And Dick was like, oh, dear God, this is my rental car. And as we pulled out of the tunnel, we got going down the road, and we came to a stoplight. I said, Steve, look, look out. Let me see if you can see if everything's okay. And he, he opened the door, and he looked under the, the rocker panel, and he goes, oh, yeah, everything's good to go. You can't see a thing. And when I looked in the mirror, he gave me this facial expression, which said a thousand words of, oh, my goodness, we have wrecked the car. And so Steve Burns and I would sing, the chase is on. <laughs> and uh, we, uh, we did that chase is on show for a couple of years, and when... My first opportunity to do that show was because I didn't make the chase, and, um, and I feel like, in a way, it was, it was kind of a gift to get to meet Steve and be a part of that. He, I mean, he really, he truly is, and he, he's one of the greatest guys I've met in this sport, and I learned a lot about him through that show. He's always prepared, he's, uh, he's always got a smile on his face, he's got something positive to say, and he just, uh, he's a a respectable man, and he's straightforward too. Though if there's something he doesn't like, he'll tell you. But he, he just there's no beating around the bush. I mean, I just I learned a lot doing that show with him, and he was so he's so good at TV, and he was so good at his job, and he was so kind to me to help me and to you know make me feel like I was really a part of it, and that I was I was doing well when I, I know I wasn't. But uh, he just just an awesome guy. 
He is an awesome guy. Uh, that friendship between Carl Edwards and Steve Burns really meant a lot to Burnsy uh, and to Carl, as you just heard. And last season, before Carl climbed in the car to drive hundreds of miles, he asked for a cell phone and he called Steve at the house just to make sure he was doing okay. A very special friendship. Undoubtedly. Yeah, uh, when you talk about the friends that he's made out there, Carl's not the only one he feels that way about. It. I mean, I think you can see the way Matt Kiss has respected him mm -hmm. to go back and want to apologize. I've never had one come to apologize for me for offending me. So I think he, he really did. He worked very hard to develop that. And when I think about some of those moments that we've been able to share with him, uh, you go back, you talk about the Halloween deal at, at Tracks. I remember some of the ones we had here at Charlotte during the Coca-Cola 600 weekend downtown Charlotte on the North Town and the Trade. And the, the audience is out there. We were doing stage dives and we had Jody Messina. We've had, you know, Ken Stabler and Jerry Rice on the, on, on Trackside. He was able to help put together along him and Mark Smith, put some of the greatest talents you know, and, and getting stars on our shows to give us an opportunity to hang out. And on top of that, trying to corral me, Larry, and Daryl Walter is almost like being the... <laughs> trying to corral cat. Yeah. <laughs> Basically the ringmaster at Ringwood Brothers Barnum Baby Circus and three, three Ring Circus deal. He did it well. He did it well. But balancing the personalities in the garage, and, and we know how temperamental drivers can be. And, and I think about really? the many yeah. difficult circumstances Steve was placed in as a pit reporter, and, and him to be able to handle it and come out on the other side the best of friends and this never made air but i know for a fact because his pit spotter told me about it kyle bush had not had a good race somewhere and kyle after the race was walking to the motor coach lot and steve was running him down and kyle just looked at him and kept walking and steve said hey you can keep walking but I'm not going to chase after you. If you want to stop, your fans want to hear how your night went, but I'm not going to keep chasing you. And you know what? Kyle Bush stopped and did your interview. I think you can understand the friendship that developed between Dale Hart Sr. and Steve Burns. Wasn't there the same kind of elk there? They were, they were strong, sometimes stubborn men. <laughs> Very much so, and I'm glad you brought that up because I don't think a lot of people realize how much of a friendship that mm -hmm. he and, and Dale Earnhardt had, along with Neil Boddick. I mean, they just, they were really um, a lot thicker than I think a lot of people understand. And there was a lot of footage that, that you know, that uh, Steve worked with Dale on that to shoot that gave some great insight to really the man, you know, that, that Dale Earnhardt really was. And I think that, you know, that's that's the kind of thing that he kept, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't the kind of guy that went out and boasted about the fact that he was good friends with these people. He kept it under his hat and, and I think he really cherished those friendships, but he did not ever infringe upon their, their privacy. I would say just a few hours ago, Dale Earnhardt said, where the hell you been, Burns? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably that's very right. true. Defending champion Kevin Harvick was at the White House today being honored for his 2014 Spring Cup Series championship. And during the visit, President Obama offered his condolences to the Burns family. I also want to offer my condolences to everybody in the NASCAR community on the passing of a legendary reporter and broadcaster, uh, Steve Burns. And I know a lot of fans' uh, thoughts and prayers uh, today are with his wife, Karen, and his son, Bryson. Special words from the president today and the entire NASCAR community speaking out on the loss of Steve Burns. This from six-time champion Jimmy Johnson. My heart goes out to the Burns family. Hashtag Burns Strong. And Tony Stewart saying, very sad to hear about our friend Steve Burns passing away today. Huge loss for our racing family. He was one of the best ever. We will miss you. Kyle Bush saying this via Twitter. My thoughts and prayers are with the Burns family. Steve was a great man and a blessing to all that knew him. He will be greatly missed. Dale Earnhardt Jr. saying, My hope is Steve was able to see how much he was loved and appreciated by so many. Rest easy, friend. Prayers to his family. Danica Patrick saying, sad to hear that Steve Burns passed away. His last tweet, I went the distance. You did, my friend. Heaven gained a real fighter today. And Joey Logano saying, so sorry to hear about Steve. My thoughts and prayers go out to his family. Hashtag Burns Strong. We continue our tribute to Steve Burns. In a moment, you're watching a special edition of NASCAR Race Hub on Fox Sports 1. Mine. 
my first exposure to the awesome Steve Burns was through my ASA days. Um, so I would go back to maybe 97 ish, I guess, 98, somewhere in there. Um, and I was just trying to find my way into asphalt racing, grew up racing off road and motocross. And in my first real exposure in stock car racing on asphalt at all was in the ASC series. And as everybody knows, that's a pretty stout series. So to come in, when I'm, I don't know, 19, 20, something like that, trying to find my way around uh, the racetracks, the pit area, um, get to know folks, I met this extremely nice and friendly TV guy named Steve Burns. And uh, that point on, formed a friendship with him and a uh, bond that uh, you know, I'll never forget. A great story there from six-time champion Jimmy Johnson talking about Steve Burns and with us now on NASCAR Race Hub, the voice of NASCAR on Fox, Mike Joy. I know you and Steve have worked together on countless shows, countless broadcasts over the years. Your, your thoughts and reflections on the news we've heard today, Mike. Well, it has been a long time, and, and it's been a great time. My wife asks, how can God give cancer to someone so good? God made a mistake, but... I think once he realized that mistake with the outpouring of love from all of us, he gave Steve a great gift. He gave him time and gave us time to Dale Jr.'s tweet to show him how much we all loved him and how much we all appreciated him. Um, my wife was texting uh, back and forth with, with uh, Karen and Steve during the race. Um, she texted to both of them how proud she was of the job that Bryson did and talking about his best friend and his dad. And Karen tweeted back right away, and Steve tweeted back just a little bit later. He was very, very proud of his son. And he fully felt throughout the day and that long, long evening just how much everyone in this sport cared about him and loved him and, and still does. He is just such a very, very special person. We got uh, Happy Birthday Steve Burns trending. Uh, and when I saw him on Tuesday, I told him that he was, he was pretty excited. He goes, yeah, Bryson says trending. You know? <laughs> and it was very, very cool. But he knew how much we all cared. And I think that should give us some comfort. Yeah, we, we all know how much Steve loved NASCAR. And on Sunday at Bristol, we found out just how much NASCAR loved him. And, you know, there are many words we could use to describe Steve Burns. But we asked some of his closest friends to use just one. If I had to describe Steve in just a couple of words, it would be that he's real, he's kind, and he's honest. The word that stands out is genuine. The one word I would use to describe Steve Burns is uh, compassionate, or just kind. Um, you know, he just was always a kind man. One word that I think defines him very well is his love for people and the ultimate professional. Infectious, you know, I mean, I feel like he's one of those guys that once he started talking, people listen. When you laughed, others were laughing too. The one thing that I think I take away from um, from all of this is, is courageous. I think the biggest thing is just being courageous, you know, seeing what he's went through the last year and, and um, everything that he's been fighting for. Steve's a genuinely a great guy who loves his family, who's a good role model. Not only do you see Steve and talk and think, wow, a great guy, there's a feeling that came with your moments with Steve Burns, and uh, that's, it's pretty rare. Steve always seemed like he was happy and looking forward to his job and, and you know, really wanted to talk to you and ask you about the race. And there's a few people in life that you run across, and, and they just make you feel good because they're always smiling, never really had anything negative to say, and that was... that kind of personifies Steve Burns. He's fun, you know, very positive, always smiling. But I mean, in one word, just he's a, he's a really warm personality and uh, very well-liked, well-respected. He's the kind of guy that I think all of us hope that we can be. Some strong words there from some of the biggest names in NASCAR. You, you got one word for Steve Burns, Mike? No, but I've got two. Steve always wanted to get the story. He never wanted to be the story. And he did his job with a combination of humor and grace and professionalism. And every time someone would come to me and say, I want to do this. Who, who should I emulate? How should I do this job? Or when I talk to someone who I thought needed a little guidance and a push in the right direction, I'd always say, be like Steve Burns. And 
I had to had to ask him last time I saw him. Who's going to be my role model now? So my two words, role model. Very good. You know, the, the one word that I thought of was dedication. He, he, was, he was dedicated to NASCAR, as you and I both know. Dedicated to his career and all of us at NASCAR on Fox. But perhaps most of all, dedicated to his family. Oh, Karen certainly. of 22 years, his wife, and of course his 12-year-old son, Bryson. His other love, football. Mm -hmm. And I know one of his greatest, proudest moments in his career was the opportunity that Fox gave him to call an NFL game. It was the Charlotte Panthers game. And he did the play-by-play. -play, and uh, he came, came back with that, you know, measure of humility that he has. He says, you know, I could have done better, but boy, I had a blast doing it. And, and here you see here Bill Moss. Uh, talking football, it was a, a great opportunity for Steve to get to work for NFL on Fox. Good to have my joy with us. More stories about Steve Burns when we continue on this special edition of NASCAR Race Out. edition of NASCAR Race Hub. Today the NASCAR community mourning the loss of Stephen Patrick Burns who passed away this morning at the age of 56. Throughout the hour we are honoring and remembering our good friend Steve Burns. Alongside Adam Alexander, I'm Danielle Trotta. We'd like to welcome in Steve's good friend Daryl Waltrip joining us now. Daryl, it's so great that on Sunday at Bristol Motor Speedway Steve got to see all of us celebrate his life, and one of the last times I spoke with him, he said a big thank you to everybody. His heart was filled with so much love, and he got to see how many people he touched. What was it you loved about Bernsey? Well, I heard you ask the other, other guys, of, you know, one word. Steve's not a one-word guy. Uh, he's a journalist, and... Uh, and I, and I learned so much from him. We worked together for years, and I worked along beside of him. And uh, I, I, I just loved, I loved his personality. Uh, he was warm and engaging. He made you feel comfortable. Some of the interviews I've watched him do with the celebrities uh, in our sport, uh, Martha Earnhardt comes to mind, others, the uh, delicate situations that Steve would handle with so much class. But then I have to laugh, and I know you do too, and you may have already played the interview he did with the... Tony Stewart out in California a couple of years ago, but that's Burns at his finest. Uh, when there was a when there was an interview that had to be done and nobody else wanted to do it, and I thought, don't, don't ask don't ask me, we'd send old Burnsy in and he'd get the job done. Uh, but just like Sunday, I'm sure he will. I know he watched, and I know he had to be as proud as he could possibly be. But you know what? You'd never know it, because that's the kind of guy he was. You know why he was happy? Because of Karen and Bryson. We've, we've, we've been here for Steve through this whole battle with cancer, but now we got to be here for Karen and Bryson uh, now that Steve has passed. And so uh, uh, he loved those. He loved Bryson. It's his best buddy. We saw the interview Bryson did uh, before the race Sunday at Bristol. Uh, and and I, that's one of the things that I know as a dad uh, that, that always kind of touched my heart. Uh, what it would be like if my girls didn't have me here to help take care of them, watch after them. And, uh, and I, I'm sure that, uh, and that poor Bryson is, is going to miss his dad more than anybody. And so Burns is a, is a great journalist, a great TV personality, but he was a greater father, a greater husband. He loved the Lord. Uh, and we went to his house. Then, you know, we went over to his house a couple weeks ago. Stevie and I did. Knocked on the door. If Burns comes to the door, opens that door, he got that big smile on his face, you would have never, ever known anything was wrong. We came in, sat down, we drank coffee. We talked about baseball and his nephews. We talked about how bright Bryson is and his future. He and Karen's relationship. And, and it was so good just to sit there and just chat. And not once, not once was there a word said about his cancer or what was going to happen to him. It, it was like it didn't even exist, and, and that's the way Burns was. I mean, he was a humble man, and uh, I learned I learned so much from him. I, 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 I like so many others. If if I had a, if I had a really tough interview I wanted to do, I'd go ask Burns now. What do you think I should do? What do you think I should ask? 
Because Bernsey is one of those guys, somebody said a long time ago, that a journalist is supposed to stand on the side and clap, not be a part of the parade. And, and that's, that, that's Steve Burns. And, and one word, my one word would be respect. If you've been here 56 years, and when you leave here, everybody that ever came in, that knew you or ever came in touch with you, respected you, that's about as good as it can get. You know, Daryl, you and I were talking recently about the NASCAR on Fox Family, and, and one of the words that you used was comfortable. You say, everybody's so comfortable together. And at the foundation of that, one of our ring leaders, over the years, Steve Burns. Yeah, there's no question about it. He, just, he was just one of those guys that he never knew a stranger. Uh, he was always comfortable in any situation, no matter how difficult it might be or how uncomfortable someone else might be. Steve could come in with that big smile and that warm heart and, and cheer things up. And the first thing you know, uh, you know, he had you uh, eating out of the palm of his hand. Uh, he, was a, he was a southern gentleman. He was a real gentleman. And uh, his legacy, will, it's not just what he has done. His legacies will be something we'll be talking about years to come. And that's important, too. Not that he's gone and we're going to honor him now, and we honored him Sunday, and now we got to get on with the task at hand, which we're really kind of bad to do sometimes. we got to think about Burns every time we get ready to do something, and we got to think about Karen and Bryce and, and their future as well. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of our community. My gosh, our, com our community... The, the drivers in NASCAR, you imagine what it took to put that, that, that Burn Strong program together, stand up for cancer. Uh, only a few short days to put that together. Our boss, Eric Shanks and um, Megan and a couple of, uh, just two or three people got behind that thing and worked their, worked their hearts out and got it done. And what an incredible day it was. And, and it was an all day and all night affair. And I, and I know it meant a lot to Steve. And I... I know it'll mean a lot to Bryson and Karen uh, as we go down the road. Daryl, as always, we uh, we appreciate your words. We'll see you this weekend at Richmond. Thanks for being with us on NASCAR Race Up. You heard DW you right, mention the moment of Steve Burns interviewing Tony Stewart post-race. He chuckled about that one. You'll see that and more of Steve's best on-air moments right after the break. Stay with us as we honor our good friend. We are back on a very special edition of NASCAR Race Hub. As today, we honor the life and legacy of our friend and colleague, Steve Burns, who today lost his battle with cancer at the age of 56. Earlier this afternoon, NASCAR chairman and CEO Brian France released this statement. NASCAR extends its condolences to the many friends, Fox Sports colleagues, and family of Steve Burns. Whether you had the privilege of knowing him, or if you watched him on television for the last three decades, Steve's work ethic and authenticity made him a beloved individual inside and outside the garage. His level of professionalism was matched only by the warmth he showed everyone he met. He battled cancer with tenacity and was a true inspiration to everyone in the NASCAR family. Simply stated, we'll miss Steve dearly. Our thoughts are especially with his wife Karen and son Bryson during this difficult time. And Danielle, this from Richard Petty. Steve was a person who had a real passion for his job, and that's what made him stand out as one of the best he did. He was always humble, too, and I never saw him treat anyone unfairly. That's just how he did his job and lived his life. He always treated myself, our family, and our race teams with great respect, and I admired him for that. He will be missed by many of our families, Thoughts and prayers are with Karen Bryson and the rest of his family. Steve loved NASCAR, but his love for sports didn't stop there. I think what would surprise a lot of people is his knowledge for sports in general. Man, he knew it all. I mean, you know, I, I always thought Steve Burns was just a, a race reporter. I mean, he knows, he knows about everything. Steve is just a sports fan. Uh, his love for those Maryland Terrapins, his love for the Washington Redskins. We, we gave him a hard time about that the last few years for obvious reasons, but I promise you, Steve would not give up on those Redskins. Well, Steve was a quarterback in college, um, at the same college that I went to at a different time. 
Um, but he loved football, and man, he was a good quarterback. So I remember the conversation him and I had when Fox asked him to go do some play-by-play -play work uh, at some football games, the Carolina Panther game, and he was absolutely so excited. Steve would always say, hail to the Redskins. He came to work every day here at Fox Sports 1 in workout pants or either a Maryland Terrapins t-shirt or an App State football shirt and a baseball cap. Just an everyday guy who earned the respect of everyone around him. Good friends with Dale Earnhardt Sr. And now, from one champion to another, here's Brad Keselowski offering his memories of Steve. As many of you know, today I was scheduled to be the guest race analyst on Race Hub. But when I sat in this seat here today, I couldn't help but think about the last time I was in this position. It was 2012, after I'd won the Spring Cup Championship, and I was being interviewed by Steve Burns. Now, Steve passed away today, and we're thinking about him and his family. So rather than spend today's show talking about Bristol, I thought it might be better if we talked about Steve, his family, and some of his colleagues' favorite memories. So here you go. One of my funniest memories, we were at Dover for a cup race, and um, all of a sudden I heard somebody doing this big laugh. <laughs> it always made me happy because he meant it in fun. He wasn't making fun of me. We did a special edition Halloween show at Talladega, and we all dressed up as characters. And Steve dressed up as Ric Flair. I mean, he had it going on. I'm a limo riding jet He had the blonde hair, he had the robe, and after watching him, I'm not sure Ric Flair could do Ric Flair as good as Steve Burns did Ric Flair. For a short period of time, uh, in 2014, I got to work with Steve on a fairly regular basis when we were doing some truck races. But we said it yesterday, we'll say it again, if you like speed, you've come to the right place. He had the greatest laugh when you really got Steve to belly roll, and the guy that did it better than anyone else, no doubt, was Jimmy Spencer. Jimmy Spencer, dressed as a leprechaun, had Steve in tears. Welcome back to NASCAR Race Hub. Jimmy Spencer's here. Have any drivers told you they plan on using your song suggestions for Tuesday this weekend in Bristol? No. <laughs> We were out at the Sonoma Racetrack, and Hall of Famer Jerry Rice was a guest on the show. And what we did was we got Steve a football, and he was able to send Jerry Rice off the desk into the crowd, and Steve hit Jerry Rice in the hands with one of the most perfect spirals you've ever seen thrown. Hey, Jerry, I, I'd love to say that I can play the pass to Jerry Rice. Oh. Is you want? Yeah, you want me to go to Jerry? Yeah, go down there. I love what you said in that piece, Danielle, the laugh. And, and I know Steve and I have had the opportunity to talk on the phone a lot lately. Yeah. And, and you didn't have to be with Steve, if you know him at all, to see him barreling over when he laughed, even over the phone. It, it was infectious, his laugh. It's very infectious. And again, you, you saw that one moment right there when he had an opportunity to do something that he loved to do. Because he was, he was such a great sports person. And have an opportunity to throw that pass to Jerry Rice, I mean, he was just... He was fooling himself about the next month, and whether it was playing baseball, I remember we were working with, who was we working with up there? Was it Kansas or someplace? Uh, Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. And he was trying to teach one of the younger kids how to throw. Reed Sorensen. Reed Sorensen yeah. to throw baseball, because he was getting ready to throw the first pitch out of <laughs> the Chicago game. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were catching, and he, yep. and he was pitching, and I jumped in there to, kind of like, uh, me the batter. I actually had a kit catcher's mask on, thank goodness, because Elliot Sadler decided to do a pitch, and Elliot don't pitch very well, but... He hit me in the back of the head, and I never will forget, Steve was about the first person to get to me. I mean, he knocked me off my feet, hit me in the back of the head, and Steve got to me. Are you all right? You all right? And as soon as he realized I wasn't hurt, he started laughing, and he laughed, and they laughed for the next, I think, hour and a half because they busted me in the back of the head. He had no problems having fun, no. but when it was time to go to work, he was able to turn the corner and get the job done in one of our favorite moments of all time a couple of years ago in Fontana, California. 
But Tony, what angered you at the end of the race? What did you take issue with? What the hell do you think I was mad about? Dumb little s which runs us clear down to the infield. He wants to b about everybody else. And he's the one that drives like a little b I'm gonna bust his ass. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. <laughs> the only thing he didn't do is blow on the mic before he took it back in that folder. And I remember Steve coming back to race of the Monday after Fontana. He had he got such a kick out of that interview. I mean, he loved it. When we told him we were going to play it on the show, he took so much pride in it. He thought it was hysterical. But but also the fact that he could he had that rapport. He had that relationship with, with Tony Stewart. Uh, he commanded that respect. Exactly. Right? In the heat of the moment, when drivers are pissed off, they get out of those race cars. You talk to Steve Burns, you were going to give him that sound bite. And it, it was just great. I, I love the camaraderie and the friendship. You could see the respect between those two. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of pit reporters in our sport, and they all do an unbelievable job for all the networks. But Steve Burns, probably the only reporter, A, that could have even gotten that interview with Tony yeah. Stewart, but could have gotten a response and then knew how to respond to Tony's response. <laughs> I, I, again, I don't know if there's a single member of any of the media that has walked through that garage area that the competitors respected more than Steve Burns. Well said. We'll continue to honor our good friend Steve Burns without the hour here on Race Up. Coming up, the first time some of his friends met Steve and some of his best moments on air. Stay with us. We are back on NASCAR Race Hub as we continue to honor the life of Steve Burns and so much conversation in recent days about the 30 years that he covered NASCAR. But his broadcasting career actually began back in 1982 at the NBC affiliate in Charleston, South Carolina. At the end of that run, he began covering NASCAR and has done so for the last 30 years, including 15 seasons of NASCAR on Fox and the last four right here in the studio with us. And now, some of our NASCAR family recounting their first encounter with Steve Burns. The first time I remember running into Steve Burns was uh, at Rockingham, and he was working for uh, Patty Wheeler at the time. And he came over, and he was, uh, I think, an associate producer. He was working with a camera crew. And he introduced himself, and a uh, very polite young man, I remember. And again, Steve and I are not that much different as far as our ages are concerned, but, uh, you know, he just looked so young, and, and at the same time, again, he was just, he seemed so energetic and, and excited about being a part of the, uh, the NASCAR world at the time. The first time that we really started to work together consistently was in 2007. We were working on This Week in NASCAR, and uh, I would go over there, and I did probably, gosh, maybe 20 shows that year, and we had different people in there, whether it was... Mike Waltrip, or, or Biffle, or maybe Schrader, and uh, Burns and myself, and gosh, we used to have so much fun, and the neatest thing about that was, you know, Steve was such a professional, uh, he, he was a great host, he obviously one of the best uh, teleprompter readers you've ever seen in your life, uh, was really diligent about his notes, and he, he would lead you so well, made you feel very comfortable in those, those environments that uh, you were destined to have a good show as long as Burns was on it. I first met Steve when I was working at Sunbelt Video, and we were starting a show called Inside Western Cup Racing, and it eventually became Inside NASCAR. He didn't have much NASCAR experience. In fact, he came from a different background in television. He was relatively young at the time and looking for something to get into in sports, and boy, did he fit in very well. He was the ultimate professional in the sport and he had fun at it and it made it, it easier for those who were working with him to do their jobs because he enjoyed what he was doing and one thing that impressed me about Stan is they did not take him too long to build respect in the garage area the teams and the drivers learned very quickly that they could confide in him if they needed to if it didn't need to go on there that day or the next week or whenever it did he would honor their wishes and uh, they respected that and so he became a very popular individual not only with the drivers and the people in the garage area but also with the fans doesn't ned jarrett always know just what to say now he was one of my role models uh, both in life and in the broadcast booth obviously one of steve's as well and, and that, that just puts it so well. So we know Burns was a great reporter. He was great hosting this show. He was great at reading teleprompter. But I think he was really in his element 
hosting Trackside. What up? Just a freewheeling, no script, no holds barred. Hey, the show's heavy. Well, too bad. We gotta, we're having fun. Yeah, and I never will forget, Jeff talked earlier about we would go down to Charlotte at Speed Street, and it was at the end of the show, and, and Elliot Sadler was going to do the dive out in the crowd. We were still live. Oh. Elliot Sadler went off the stage, and Burns watched him go off the stage and said, okay, now. And, and, and it's like everybody's checking on, on Elliot, but we knew we had to finish this show. We were still live. Yeah, by the way, the crowd did not catch him. No, they, missed, <laughs> they missed him, but that, that was the way Steve was. He was always ready to anticipate and handle, the, I guess you might say, the fastball, and that's exactly what he did that night, because there was Elliot basically getting ready to go to the hospital, and Burns up there closing out the show with you. And Mike, you'll relate to this, because if you remember, for so many years, Steve would do the introduction for the Sprint All-Star Race. Right. And you and I and Daryl, we would do the race, and we would do the, the preliminary race, and then we would be kind of down for about 30 or 40 minutes while the introductions were going on. Jeff was down there. And I remember one year, I think a live crowd just stimulated Steve Burns. If you remember, he started yes. the the, uh, the uh, uh, introduction off kind of normal, and by the time he got to the end of it, you would have thought he was introducing the, the main event for a wrestling match. Woo! He was over the top with it and just having a big old time with it. I don't know who's going to impersonate Ric Flair now. Or Sterling Marlin, because there's nobody in the history of NASCAR broadcasting that can say stick in a spoke <laughs> like Steve Burns. That's right. Our buddy. More after this. The first time I came across Steve Burns was probably when I was 20 years old. I had a little NASCAR blog that I was writing and I had wanted to do an interview with Steve for my website. So I forget how I came across his email address, but I just sent him an email and kind of asked if he'd be willing to do an interview with me for my website. And I remember being like so excited responded and he was willing to do it and uh, that kind of began our friendship I guess per se that was the first time I'd ever communicated with him but I remember being really excited to actually hear back from somebody that I had watched for so many years and someone I really respected and it was neat because he actually took time out of his day to answer some girl he didn't even know which I, I thought was um, pretty cool a memory from Caitlin Vinci on Steve Burns there is another young reporter in the NASCAR business. Uh, I agree with Caitlin. When I came on the scene, I knew nothing, and Steve mentored me and taught me the right way to come up in this sport and in this business. Tonight's been the right way in honoring him because it hadn't been for Steve Burns probably being in here tonight. I think this has been a lot more emotional than what it's been so far. Yeah, I heard the word role model, and he's my role model, how he differentiated what he did for a living and family, but mainly his love for his family. I think in honor of Steve, we should go off the air tonight, Steve Burns style. As we say goodnight on this edition of NASCAR Race Hub, we say have an awesome night, everybody. The guy you saw on television was always having a smile on his face. Uh, that was the real Steve Burns. And I think about all the people, including myself, that were blessed and had an opportunity to learn from him. I don't think there's any way to describe how much we all miss Steve. I know I speak for myself. I don't think there's any way to measure it. But I think what we have to do is, is celebrate Steve Burns' life, because that's what Steve Burns did every single day. Steve was well loved inside that, that garage area. He's meant so much to me, uh, just a as a friend, but just in that garage area, he's just a special guy. Steve Burns probably has the utmost respect from the drivers, the crew members, the team owners, you name it, on down the line. He garners a lot of respect out of that garage area, and uh, deservedly so. His smile was something that got me, helped get me through every day. And uh, I just can't ever say um, that I've had a better friend uh, than Steve Burns. All I know is that uh, from this day forward, I want to be more like Steve Burns. He was, uh, he's a good man. He's a good man. We're going to miss him. <laughs>